welcome to this uh, introduction on the assembler and the linker for uh, the MSP430 assembly language. Uh, it's the recommended MSP430 assembly tutorial is linked on the wiki, I believe. Thanks to Mark Clem Clement and uh, BYU for a lot of this material here. So our learning objectives for this, uh, this section are uh, you should be able to uh, explain the difference between a low and a high level language, justify the use of assembly code and why you're studying it, I contrast assembler directives with assembler code, describe the assembler linker process, contrast a library with a computer program, describe a program or program sections and how they are used by the linker to create an executable. Give examples of emulated and intrinsic instructions and use systematic decomposition to create an assembly program. The topics are high level versus assembly and assembly instructions and emulated instructions. It will be this first uh, mini lecture. And then uh, we'll look at the assembler, we'll look at the linker, and we'll look at uh, how to code an assembly and systematic decomposition. So uh, first let's look at high-level languages. Well, high-level languages like C, uh, which you've learned before, are easier to learn, they're easier to use, easier to understand, more programmer-friendly, they're more instruction set architecture independent. In other words, uh, when you write a C program, you can compile that on an MSP430 or on your PC or a lot of other processors. Um, you know, they're portable because they're instruction architecture independent. And uh, each high-level statement translates into several instructions in the instruction set architecture of the computer. Whereas assembly language is lower level, it's instruction level architecture or instruction set architecture dependent. Fewer data types, there's no distinguishing between any of the different data types uh, as far as the assembly language when you read the code you have to interpret that binary data. It's, uh, it's not apparent in the code what it is. There are no programming restrictions. Each uh, instruction specifies a single instruction set architecture instruction and it makes low-level programming more user-friendly. In other words, better than machine code. And it's uh, gives you more efficient code sometimes because you're closer to the instruction set architecture. So why assembly code? It allows us to work at a higher level than machine language. Sometimes it's called glorified machine code. Uh, being closer to the instruction set architecture can allow you to write more efficient code, but of course it's only for that specific processor. There's no programming restrictions. In other words, there is lots of rope to hang yourself. It allows us to use symbolic names for opcodes and memory locations, so we don't have to remember that certain memory locations are where we're storing certain bits of information. The symbolic names make that more easy for us to remember. Um, so uh, it has things like, uh, you know, add, call, push, you know, all those kind of things rather than numbers. Um, you know, uh, you can use uh, variables like sum and product. Uh, you don't need to know every address of every storage location. Uh, it helps to allocate memory locations and provides additional error checking than machine code would. And one of the great things for, that you uh, really don't realize how big it is until you actually have to do it yourself because you don't have an assembler is it calculates address offsets and things like that. And that's a really big deal. So let's look at uh, assembly instructions. Uh, um, so uh, the, let's look at the, uh, at the double operand instructions to start with. So the, on the left, we have the mnemonic. That's the uh, way you write the instruction. 
the operation is got given in the middle and on the right uh, there's a short description of the uh, instruction. So notice that all of them have a dot B or dot W. That means we can do this with a byte or a word. And these have, uh, there's double operand instructions. So they have source and destination addresses. Remember, you uh, take the source and you do something with it and uh, the result ends up in the destination. So uh, first one is add. So that source plus destination goes to destination. Add with carry is source plus destination plus the carry bit goes into the destination. The uh, D add stands for decimal add. This is binary coded decimal and it adds uh, source plus destination plus carry goes into the destination, but it, uh, um, you know, you gotta, uh, it's, it's doing it uh, in a base 10 method, even though we're using six to base 16 numbers. And then there's subtract and so source plus not source, I mean destination plus not source plus one goes into the destination. In other words, subtract the source from the destination and it goes into the destination. Subtract with carry, it subtracts the source and carry from the destination. So then there's logical, those are the arithmetic ones. Let's look at the logical and register control instructions. There's AND, which ANDs the source and the destination, and puts it in the destination. Bit clear, it, it clears whatever bits uh, are in the source or set in the source, it clears those bits in the destination register. Bit set um, sets whatever bits um, are in the source and the destination. Essentially, it does an OR operation of source and destination. Um, and then bit is a, a test. It tests, tests the bits in the source, um, tests, the, tests the bits in the destination. The, the bits that are tested are the ones that are listed in the source. And then there's exclusive OR, which exclusive OR is the source and destination. Lastly, there's some data instructions like uh, CMP for compare, it's, it gives you the source minus the destination. It doesn't put the result anywhere, but it does set the flag, so it can be used very nicely for um, jump not equal or something. Then there's move. Move moves the source to the destination. And we're familiar with that. Now then there's single operand instructions. Um, there's RRC, which is rotate right through carry. You can see the carry goes into the most significant bit. You move everything to the right, and the least significant bit goes out, of, out in the carry. And then there's swap bytes. Um, you swap bytes uh, the, the top word with the bottom word. And then um, rotate right to arithmetic. Um, doesn't rotate the carry in, but it uh, does similar to the RRC. Then there's SXT, which is sign extend the byte. Um, and uh, so that extends the sign. You know, if it's negative, adds ones to the left. If it's positive, adds zeros to the left. And then there's push, which uh, puts a uh, pushes the moves everything up on the stack and, and puts uh, you know the word that you wanted the register you wanted on the stack. And, and so it has to manipulate the stack pointer to do that. There's call, which uh, jumps off to a subroutine from which you can return. And there's RETI, which is the return from interrupt. And then there's the relative jump instructions. Um, there's uh, jump not zero or uh, jump not equal. And that jumps if the zero flag is set to zero. And then there's JZ or JEQ, which jumps if the zero flag is set to one. And then there's JNC and JLO, which jumps if carry equals zero. And then there's JC and JHS, which uh, jumps if the carry is set to one. And JN jumps if the N, N flag is set to one, <coughs> indicating a negative number. <clears throat> and uh, JGE uh, jumps if N a equals V. If the, uh, if the N uh, is set and the V is set, that means it's uh, greater than or equal to with the, you know, zero or positive. And if the N does not, is not the same as the V uh, flag, then uh, um, 
it won't jump, and JL does it when the N is not equal to the V, and the JMP just jumps whatever, uh, no matter what the flags say. So then there's these things called emulated instructions. Uh, there's the 27 instructions we've looked at, and they're defined by the MSP4030 instruction set architecture, and you could get by entirely with them. But there are 24 additional emulated instructions, and these are really um, instructions that are made for assembly language that uh, do things with the 27 instructions we already have, but they're more easy to read uh, than um, they would be if you didn't use these emulated instructions. So using emulated instructions makes your assembly code easier to read, and I recommend using them. Um, uh, emulated instructions are replaced automatically when you uh, assemble the program by the MSP430 uh, native, you know, the 27 instructions that are native. And there are no penalty for using emulated instructions. It just makes your assembly code easier to read. So what are these emulated instructions? So we're going to look at them in a similar way that we've looked at the other ones, except we're also going to show you the emulation. In other words, if you didn't want to use the emulated instruction, you could use the emulation and it would work just as well. But the emulate, uh, you know, the, the mnemonic for the emulated instruction is usually easier to understand and I would recommend using it in your code because it will be easier to read. But it's also, of course, making it more of a high level language than it would be otherwise if you look at it that way. But it's still, it's still a good, uh, I think, thing for, uh, for humans. So uh, ADC, add carry to destination, you can see what that, uh, that does there. It used the ADDC. And then uh, DADC, which is decimal add carry to destination. And uh, then there's uh, decrement, that's really subtracting one. And there's decrement decimal, or decrement twice, I mean. DECD, decrement double an increment, an increment double, which you know, adds one and adds two. And uh, then there's subtract with carry. And, uh, and that subtracts the source and the borrow, not carry, which is the not carry, the borrow is the not carry from the destination. Then there's some program flow constructions. BR stands for branch destination, branch to destination. Basically, that moves the destination to the pro program counter. And uh, then there's disable interrupts and enable interrupts. And that basically sets some flags in the status register. That's the uh, SR, I mean, uh, register one, I believe. And then uh, there's no op, which basically does nothing. It moves register three to register three, so it just uses up uh, one instruction cycle. And then there's uh, return, which returns from uh, subroutine. And you can see it manipulates the stack pointer there. We'll talk about how uh, subroutines work uh, a little later. And uh, to continue on with the emulated instructions, there's uh, clear the destination, so you can uh, basically move zero into the destination, that's clearing it. And you can clear uh, the carry flag, and you can clear all the other flags, basically. You can pop, which means uh, grab a, a word off the stack and move the stack pointer down. Um, you can uh, um, set the carry flag, the, the end flag, the, the uh, zero flag, and so on. And you can test uh, um, destinations too to see whether they're equal to zero. And uh, then there's some uh, some other program flow control instructions. There's uh, um, the invert the bits in the destination. Uh, you can roll left arithmetically. You can roll left through carry and uh, you know the no op. We looked at that already, I guess. Okay, so this is a quiz for you. Given the memory contents to the right, what are the values for registers four and five after each instruction to the left is executed? So good luck on the quiz. You might want to stop the video here so that you can work on this quiz.